stocks finishing the day deep in the red. The Dow and S&P handing in their worst days since August and on the back of the weak manufacturing data. Meantime, Europe has been pumping out some pretty bad data of its own. But our next guest says that might actually be a good thing. Let's go off the charts with Chris Verone of Strategus. Chris, what are you looking at? We're looking at European PMIs. We know they've been awful. They've been bad for two years now, though. So this is the German PMI. It peaked two years ago at 63. We know what the last two years have looked like, 63 all the way down to the current print, about 41. That's about as bad as we see historically. And I think the question is, after two years of weakness, what is priced into the stocks here? So what we did, we went back historically and looked at all the times that the German PMI has been this low. What have German stocks done over the next six months? So when we look at some of these dates here, September of 01, April of 03, Jan 09, May 12, the forward performance six months later is exceptional, up 25, up 24 percent, up 22, up 19. So the question we ask ourselves today, German PMI at 41.7, is it so bad that it's good? So let's look at the stocks. This is the Euro stocks, 600 index. Did this 20 percent decline last year price in what the data is already telling us right now. When I look at the market today, remarkably resilient, consolidating above and upward sloping 200-day moving average. It's held to 50. I think the next move here is up, not down. That bad news is priced in. A longer-term look, this is Euro stocks going back over the last 30 years. We failed here in 99. We failed here in 2000. We failed here in 2015. We failed here in 2018. We think this time is different. We think we're at these highs, but we're at the bottom of the cycle. So all the bad news priced in, I would play for a major breakout here. And what is one stock in Europe that may already be sending that message? One of the biggest names, ASML, Bellwether Semi. It's already broken out. You had basically two years of nothing over the last couple of weeks, along with the semis broadly, has acted really, really well. So we know the data is bad. The PMIs have been terrible. But what's priced in at this point? And do we want to start saying, hey, this is so bad it might be good? I think the message from semis, I think the message from Europe says, get long here. All right, Chris, come on wow. over. We'll bring the chair in. Loving you as well. Thank you very much, Will. <laughs> All right, so Chris, um, Banks are a big part of European yeah. indices, and so if you isolate banks, yeah. does that chart look as good as the overall Eurostock 600? You know, there's been some quiet improvement over the last number of months, but I don't think you can sit here and say, oh, the banks are what's going to be what, what leads Europe higher uh, over coming months and coming quarters. Now, Europe broadly, as we know, is a very value-oriented energy. A lot of energy, a lot of banks. The U.S. banks are on far firmer technical ground than the European banks here. So I think if you want to make a bank call, do it closer to home. J.P. Morgan acts great. Bank of America actually acts okay. Some of the regionals have started to turn. Now, I recognize today was soft. It's going to make people uncomfortable. Is this going to be a repeat of 4Q last year? I think the market's on firmer technical ground, both here domestically and in Europe. Why is it firmer? I mean, uh, yeah. I, I know that your call is on Europe, but why is the U.S. on firmer technical ground here versus a year ago? Well, first let's talk domestically, then let's talk geographically. Domestically, right now you have more stocks above the 200-day average, so more stocks in an uptrend than you did a year ago with the S&P at a lower level. So in, the internals are actually broader. And geographically, think back one year ago, the only thing working anywhere in the world was U.S. large cap tech. It's broader today. Europe acts better. Brazil's in a bull market. Russia acts good. Korea might be bottoming. Hong Kong might be bottoming here. Samsung has turned up. So a lot of the bellwethers around the world, I think, paint a stronger picture today than what we saw 12 months hence. Okay. In Europe, so you're saying that we're going to see a big European breakout led by European technology companies? Well, there's not many they European technology exist. companies, yeah. right? But I wanted <laughs> to highlight that. ASML, okay. because <laughs> just given that it's such a, this is a $100 billion company in what globally has been a very good group. Look at every global bellwether semi. TXN, Samsung, ASML, Taiwan semi, just major breakout over the last couple of weeks. So I think it sets a good tone that there's some cyclicality right. returning to this market. But banks are sort of, eh, technically in Europe. A lot of consumer in Europe. 
right? Okay, and so think, the consumer is going to be yeah, the, and the, I, the I, turnaround I think one of the sector. real important charts within Europe, look at discretionary versus staple. So the more cyclical discretionary names actually starting to outperform the staple. So you've seen a turn there. Now, a lot of healthcare in Europe as well, particularly in the Swiss market, that's acted well here okay. as well. So I think there's things to do over there. All right, Chris, thank you. Thank you. Chris Verone, Strategas, you. you buy Europe? Really interesting stuff Chris is bringing to the table. Uh, you have to assume we're getting a trade deal, though, because, I mean, think about the weightings in Germany. Uh, you're talking about auto stocks. You're talking about Siemens. You're talking about hyper uh, kind of trade stocks. But it, it's down 22 percent on a relative basis to the S&P since the, essentially the blow up top of Gen 28. It's got to be the euro two. Here's the other part. Half of your investment is going to be probably currency, and Europe is basically trading at two-year lows to the dollar. That's good for this trade. Yeah, real quickly on the semis, you mentioned Taiwan semi. It does look beautiful. It broke out of a two-year base. Love but on one. the flip side oh. here, guys, Xilinx, which is also driven by a lot of the same factors, 5G builds, that sort of thing, is down 40%. It just made a new low in 2000, or, you know, this year. It's still up on the year a little bit. But I think there's, there's, there's a counterpoint for every interesting thing. I said, I think Chris said a lot of great stuff if you didn't know about the qualitative stuff, the headwinds that are facing this global economy.